Hi, it's Daniel. And Jenny. And Talia. And we're here at Wild Rivers for their pass holder opening day preview. We're gonna take you on a tour of the entire water park where everything now is open this year. So last year, not everything was open. This year, everything should be, so that's exciting. We'll show you everything. We will get some food and show you the menus and take you down a bunch of slides. While we're waiting, they're letting us throw rings over cones. Their system to scan your QR code to get your wristband is not working and they have told us we have to get the wristband in order to scan in at the turnstiles. So we are stuck waiting here in this line. It is already past 11 a.m. which is the time we were supposed to be let in, which is a little bit frustrating, but hopefully they'll work all this stuff out before they open to the public and their ticketing system and admission system will work properly on opening day. The good news is that they finally let us get out of the wristband line and told us that they can in fact scan our QR codes up at the turnstiles so that's what we're doing it'll be a little slow but they figured out a solution we're happy and we're about to enter so let's show you around so we have just entered they got some music playing over here on the left there is a big squirt fill station here so you can buy your big squirt little water blaster thingy over at the gift shop which is right on the right as you enter here are two of the water slides that's aquaconda and bora bora boomerango It is difficult to see, but a large locker is $18 and a jumbo locker is $23. Here are the sizes. That is a jumbo, and next to it, those are the larges. So pretty decent sizes. They don't open unless you actually pay for it, but in and out privileges, you can open and close them as many times as you want throughout the day. Uh, no extra charge, you just pay that one flat fee up front. They have a photo op. I'm not sure if that's gonna be here permanently or just for our preview day today. There's a Dippin' Dots booth. And uh, you can see there's some more water slides all around. Let's go keep walking around and showing you all the stuff that's here. So they're just past the lockers. You can see the Lazy River. If you walk up this way, up there is the entrance to go on Tortuga and Typhoon, which are two of the family raft rides. And if you do go that way, you cannot get to that other tower where everyone's holding the pink inner tubes. You have to go around back by the entrance to get there or around the back side of all of these slides here. Off to the left is Cook's Cove, which is where you will find one of the younger kids' water areas. And there's lots of shaded seating over there. And I think that's one of the places we might end up. Or here is the all new Contiki Cove, which is open this year, was not open last year. And there's lots of shaded seating there too. So that's nice and that's pretty central. So across this bridge, there is a restroom building with lots of stalls and restrooms. A new Dippin' Dots booth they've set up here this year. And as you can see, the seating is plentiful over there and lots of seating over here as well. So let's go check out this new Contiki Cove area. Here it is, your first look at Contiki Cove. Off in the distance there, there's some little water play areas. There's two little shipwreck slides right here. Two giant tube slides that are still fairly small. A uh, trio of fast straight slides and an open air little zigzag set of slides over on the far end. So this is a really nice area. Looks like it'll be a lot of fun for the younger kiddos. We're walking to the restroom and noticed that they have a little canopy here set up where you can buy beer and other drinks. So that's nice that you don't have to go all the way to the main bar to get your drinks. Now that Contiki Cove is open, you can take a path that goes behind it and it takes you from all the way there across this bridge and you can take it to the Tomcat Racers which is where we are going first and there you see it off in the distance. So here we go carrying our mat about to go up the stairs. This is a lot of stairs. Definitely if you're coming make sure that you are prepared for stairs. And this one always feels like it's the worst because you have to walk all the way to it. It's at the far corner of the park. So, yeah. 
Here I go. Woo! Woo -hoo. That was fun. It's a fun, fast, exciting start to the day. Next to the entrance exit to Tomcat Racer, there's another restroom. There is the bar area where you can get drinks and there's a lot of seating around it. This was not open last year, so nice to have it here. Just past that is the wave pool. They have a snow cone booth set up over here with more drinks and ice cream and snow cones. So that looks pretty delicious. Here's one of the entrances to Castaway River, the lazy river around the park. So we're now looping back around from basically where the wave pool is and making our way back up towards Tortuga where we're going to go on that, which is one of the family raft rides. So there is the bridge that takes you back towards Cook's Cove and Contiki Cove. And here's where you can go to get on Typhoon or Tortuga. Here is the end of the Typhoon ride. And the green one is Tortuga. It is nice to be able to walk around and not have blue fencing all around like there was last year. So this is nice. You can actually see through to other things from the lines in all of the slides. You can see everything from up here. Cook's Cove off there. Contiki Cove over here. Again, there's the end of Typhoon. Here we go on Tortuga. Whoa! Here we go. So just be prepared, they don't heat up the water. We're now gonna make our way to the main restaurant to get some food. So let's go ahead over there and show you the menu. So here we are approaching the Island Suites dessert bar area, which was not open at all last season. So let's take a look at the menu here on our way to pick up lunch. So they have wild whips from Dole, which look like they're like Dole whips, ice cream, some sundaes, funnel fries, churros, pretzels. Icy popcorn, that is a new one. Cotton candy, root beer float, and various sodas. So Island Sweets is there. There's another Dippin' Dots kiosk right there. And then that is the Pacific Grill, the main restaurant here at Wild Rivers. They have another beer cart set up over here as well. We didn't get to try out the fully open Pacific Grill last year because it was still under construction most of the season and we never made it back once they opened it. So let's go see how it is. It looks a lot nicer than the uh, sort of bungalow portables that they had set up last year. So walking in, they have a grab and go refrigerator with fruit, Uncrustables, pickles, yogurt cups, some salads, some wraps or sandwiches, more fruit, jello, puddings, yogurts, a bunch of varieties of chips. There is a grab your own pizza and everything looks like it's sort of pre-made. So you grab what you want and there are friendly team members back there that will tell you what everything is. And then here at the end, you grab your utensils and various condiments. They also have all sorts of ice cream here in this freezer, as well as different drinks in the refrigerator. 
You can buy a souvenir cup as well. And here is the icy popcorn. So it's some type of pre-made flavored popcorn. They have this on this side, and then the other side has the same stuff as well. Here's a shot of the menu with all of the costs of everything. Pretty sure they spelled Caesar wrong when spelling Caesar salad. After looking at the menu on the screens, one thing I did notice they don't actually show up there is that they have little uh, mini corn dogs as well. It's not listed on the screen menu, but that is here on the line to pick up. They're still uh, going through the learning curves here a little bit, but on this side, they actually show the signs for what everything is. So French fries, chicken tenders and fries, Angus burger, Angus cheeseburger, hot dog, Philly cheesesteak, and mini corn dog. Talia's eating her chicken tenders. How are they? I like it because it's yummy and the, and the outside is crunchy and she, well, the chicken is yummy. So that is what the chicken tenders look like. Here is the pizza. It doesn't look that exciting, but hopefully it tastes all right. But it does smell really good. It is very average, but it's not bad. It's kind of your typical, um, I'd say mall food court pizza. And here's what the mini corn dogs look like. And that tastes exactly like you'd expect it to taste like. Nothing amazing about it. I would say though, if it's been sitting out for a while, which this hasn't been, this is still pretty fresh, probably not gonna taste very good and be kind of soggy and not so crispy, but this is actually pretty good for mini corn dogs. Overall, the food is good and better than you would expect from sort of overpriced theme park style food. Um, and it is certainly very expensive for what it is, but it's good. And they do not let you bring in your own food from outside. The only thing you can bring in food and beverage wise is empty water bottles or sealed water bottles. So just plan ahead if you wanna do that, but they do have water refill stations all over for you to fill up water bottles with. So you don't need to bring a whole ton of water bottles. You can always fill them back up. Compared to last year, they seem to have a much bigger variety of food options and their cafeteria style setup inside of the restaurant seems very efficient. So you shouldn't have to wait long to get food even at peak times. Even though you can't bring food into Wild Rivers, you can take food into this picnic area that's right outside the main gate. This slide tower has six slides you can go down. The two on your left right now are the Bombay Blasters. These two short ones are the Tahitian Toucan slides. And over here on the right are Tala and Mono. I am almost all the way up to the top and I'm gonna go on one of the Bombay Blasters slides. Here I go. That was awesome. Tali and I are now making our way back up. We're gonna go on Tala and Mono, the two body slides. I'm gonna go on Mono. This one's Mono, this one's Tala. Here I go. Woo! This one's fun. Not too fast. I'm actually sitting up, so it goes a little slower when you're sitting up. We've switched, so now I'm going down mono. Here I go. This one slows down a lot right here. I'm like almost stopped. There we go, now we're picking up speed again. I don't know if I was doing something wrong or what, but I went really slow on that one. There's a crowd around this one. Everybody's watching the younger kids go down the slide, so we could all see you very slowly crawling down that one section of the tube. Last thing for me to go down is Tahitian Toucan, so let's go show you that one. Here I go. That was a lot of fun. Also over here, these are 
changing rooms and showers. So if you want to change or shower, you can do that here in these nice facilities. Talia's going to show you around Contiki Cove. Oh no! So even though they've had the whole uh, year and a half since they started construction on this park to do everything, this is not fully operational yet. It's supposed to be a swing, but there's nothing actually hanging from it. We just finished lunch. We came back here to Contiki Cove. We splashed around a little bit. Looked at all the stuff they have. It's a lot of fun. There's all sorts of fun water features for everyone to play with. There's a handful of kid-friendly slides to go down. And the fun slides here in Contiki Cove do not have a height requirement, so they are good for children of all ages. They end in a very shallow pool that pretty much anyone can stand up in. And floaties and vests are allowed in the Contiki Cove area. Now we're gonna try and go on some more of the big slides. So let's see where we end up. We are walking back towards the front of Wild Rivers and we're gonna make our way to the two-person tube slides. So there are five slides up on the structure. We're gonna come back later to Aquaconda and the Boomerango family raft rides, as well as Typhoon. I'm not sure we're gonna make it on everything today, but we're gonna try. I really wanna go to Tiki's Revenge. That's the really fun inner tube slide where you go through a sort of circular thing that uh, they're not allowed to call but we kind of refer to lovingly as the toilet bowl flush. This one does have markings on the floor so Pipeline, Fiji Falls, and Samoan Serpent you stay on the left. Tiki's Revenge you stay on the right and then the left staircase is only for Pelican Plunge water roller coaster. Here I go down Tiki's Revenge! speed there. How many times am I going to go around? One more time around. It's like a bonus trip. Here I go. Woo. And splash down. That was so much fun. It's probably the best of the uh, four non-coaster slides. Here I go down Fiji Falls. Woo! Oh, this one's fast. Forgot about this one. Woo! Fix up speed around those turns. Jenny and Talia should be coming down any second. <laughs> Here we go on Samoan Serpent. Woo! Woo! Now we're going down Pelican Plunge. Here we go! Woo -hoo. Woo!
That was a lot of fun. Here comes Jenny. Now that we're done with the slides, we're gonna go head over and get a sweet treat. Just for a frame of reference, from these slides here, the front of the park is that way, and the back of the park by the restaurants is this way. I got a watermelon wildberry. It's yummy, it tastes, it's like the dual was from um, Tropical Hideaway at Disneyland, that's watermelon flavor. And I got a Coke book, Coke with ice cream. It's pretty good and refreshing. We're gonna go on Aquaconda and Bora Bora Boomerango. First up is Aquaconda. That was, that was very thrilling, a lot of fun. Very fast and very high up on the sidewalls. We decided to skip Bora Bora Boomerango. The line got a little bit long and it gets really cold and breezy on top of those slide towers. So we're gonna head back to our seats and regroup and maybe go in some of the kids' play areas. The last place we wanna show you is Cook's Cove. This is the other children's play area. It is much bigger and has bigger slides than Contiki Cove. So what's nice about Cook's Cove is that there is tons of stuff to squirt and splash and drench everybody everywhere. So I'm already getting splashed by all sorts of stuff just coming up this way. There's little water things in the ground. There's all sorts of tipping buckets everywhere. You go through this net, you're gonna get splashed. Let's do it. Oh my goodness. Whoa. There's things spritzing everywhere. I just got hit on my back. There's stuff up there. There's a handful of different slides. You can squirt people. If you turn this yellow dial, you make the water go taller and shorter. More cargo nets to climb across and get squirted. Going across this way. Look, you can squirt the people on the slide. And there's slides everywhere. So this is a lot of fun. A lot of places to explore, get wet, just do a little bit of everything. There are also cabanas that feature several seats and a fancy solar powered cooler to keep your drinks cold. Cabanas cost $350 and can be reserved ahead of time if you want to guarantee yourself getting one. We're wrapping up our day here at Wild Rivers for our pass holder preview day. We had a lot of fun. We didn't quite make it onto everything. We probably could have, but again, we just got really cold because it's not a terribly warm day today. But we had a blast going down everything. We'll put a link up in the corner to our videos we made last year that show us going on everything then. So you can kind of compare what it looked like then to what it looks like now. We'll, uh, we'll be sure to come back and show you more and we'll put a slide compilation video up of all the big slides once we have that ready. So go ahead and check that out. If you have any comments or questions about Wild Rivers, please leave them below. Be sure to like and give us a big thumbs up. It really helps us out. And if you haven't already, please subscribe for even more magical content. And we hope we put you in a magical mood.